18th bus carrying migrants from Texas has arrived in Los Angeles. Bus arriving this morning at Union Station reportedly carrying 40 asylum seekers from El Salvador and Venezuela, including 14 kids. To date, Los Angeles has received more than 500 migrants from Texas since June. With more on this latest arrival and much more, we are joined by LA City Council President Paul Krikorian. President Krikorian, uh, thanks for being with us. It's been some time. Nice right. to see you. I want to get your reaction to the uh, 14th bus, noting that this comes just, what, a couple weeks after you and the council pushed for legal action against Governor Greg Abbott. What are your thoughts on the 14th bus? Do you see an end in sight? Well, Marla and Alex, it's good to be with you. Um, so far, there have been 560 migrants that have been sent to Los Angeles by the governor of Texas as part of his national political stunt in which uh, these human beings are being put um, into this situation uh, just so he can make uh, points in the national political arena. And um, 560 people is significant, but to put it into a context, um, we receive more people arriving here in Los Angeles every day from other parts of the United States and from around the world. So Los Angeles can certainly uh, handle this situation, and we have. The mayor has a plan in place working with the faith community to provide uh, housing and uh, resources to the people who are arriving. Very often who are arriving without having uh, had any food or water on the bus. It's not clear that they even have given permission uh, to this trip or that they uh, even fully understand where it is that they're going. Um, so it's, a, it's an outrageous situation that's being caused by uh, the governor of Texas and similarly the governor of Florida on the East well, Coast as well. well they, would say that um, it's being, we they would say that it's being caused by the federal government not enforcing laws at the border. They say that there's an open border, that Texas is having to bear the brunt of the federal government's failures and with all 50 states, why shouldn't other states have to deal with this, including Los Angeles, which says that it's a sanctuary city. Well, they couldn't possibly think that California and Los Angeles doesn't deal with exactly the same sorts of issues. Um, and it's certainly clear, and one of the things that my colleagues called for in the resolution that you referenced was working with our federal partners as well as the state and county government uh, to ensure that we have more resources here to be able to respond to this situation because it is a national issue. Uh, this this is not an issue that local governments or states uh, should be uh, unfairly bearing the burden of when uh, the federal government really should be able to, to address uh, uh, fundamental immigration reform in the first place right. to provide a fairer means uh, for people to immigrate here legally, uh, but also in distributing resources that are necessary to be able to uh, address the impacts of uh, migrants when they're arriving and right. to take care of their human needs as well. That shouldn't be state and local government responding to that. It really should be the federal government. All right. Well, you feel strongly about uh, that. You also feel very strongly about this idea of redistrict, uh, redistricting. Last week, the state assembly passed SB 52. This bill would see L.A. required to establish an independent redistricting commission. You're against this. Why? No, I'm not against it at all. Um, we originally opposed SB 52 because uh, it mandated a particular type of uh, independent redistricting, um, which was, you know, in my view, not constitutional for the state of California to mandate specifically on the city of Los Angeles their view of how redistricting should be done. But the bill has been changed so that it only provides now that independent redistricting commission would be required under the state law if we don't enact one by 2029. Well, I'm here to tell you we will be enacting one well before 2029. I fully support independent redistricting. My committee uh, that I formed when I first became council president, the ad hoc committee on governance reform, has taken this up. Uh, we've worked with uh, community stakeholders with good government uh, advocates like Common Cause and the League of Women Voters. Uh, we've gotten input from the finest academic minds on this issue who've studied this issue for years. Uh, and we are developing a fully independent redistricting commission in Los Angeles for the first time in a hundred years. Mm -hmm. And as a result of our work, this is gonna be on the ballot for the voters uh, to approve 
uh, on next year's ballot. Okay, in 2024. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Um, meanwhile, another issue we know you're passionate about, um, you're Armenian. Azerbaijan has launched an operation today against Armenian forces. Um, your response to this and, and the main message you want to get out on this. Well, thank you, Alex. And I, I am, of course, the first uh, elected official in Los Angeles history of Armenian-American descent. Uh, but whether I was Armenian or any other nationality, uh, as an American, I care deeply about this issue because the people of Artsakh declared their independence from the Soviet Union uh, at the breakup of the Cold War. And they are a democracy that has been flourishing since that time under constant threat of genocide uh, from Azerbaijan, which has the president of Azerbaijan, the dictator of Azerbaijan, has repeatedly threatened to wipe out the people of Artsakh, to ethnically cleanse this area of all traces of its Armenian history, even though these are the indigenous people of this region. And the military action today is just a continuation of that genocidal plan. We saw it with the blockade, the illegal blockade that this dictator imposed on these people, depriving them of food, medicine, uh, you know, basic human needs. And when the world roundly criticized that, he not only ignored those criticisms, he has now launched military action to complete the genocide that he couldn't uh, complete through blockade alone. So the world should really pay notice, and the, I hope that the United Nations and our own country uh, will take forceful action to bring this lawless, pariah dictator to heal and make sure that we stand up for democracy and we stand up stand against tyranny and genocide. Well, uh, we will be covering it. And as you know, our Aroxia Carpadian feels just as you do, very passionate about this. So we will continue yeah. to cover it. Azerbaijan, by the way, calls this an anti-terrorist oper mm -hmm. operation. They say uh, that Armenia has been smuggling in weapons. That's their take on all of this. Obviously, you have a different view, uh, as do many other leaders around the world. Um, Alex, it's a common element of all perpetrators of genocide to dehumanize the victims of that genocide before they commit slaughter. Yeah. And that's exactly what Aliyev has done time and time again with his racist invectives against the indigenous Armenian population of Artsakh. All right, Paul Krikorian, thank you so much for sharing your views. Obviously, very passionate about this. Mm -hmm. and we appreciate pleasure. you um, being here.